Welcome to the Review Reviewer, your review it, I review you. This is my partner, Mr. Ed. Today, we're taking a look at CR's Chief Damage Review of Tops Attacks. Just note, I really love this intro. I just love Fox Knight. Aww. Baseball cards are just as much an American pastime as the game itself. But that's not to say they haven't had their share of troubles over the years. Let me take you back. Back to the future! The industry was trying to recover from the speculator-driven crash that affected most of the collecting community. You know, that same one where people bought like 20 copies of X-Men number one in hopes that they would someday be millionaires. Somehow. You'd be surprised how much shit like that goes for. And after that, the trading card companies were dealt another blow. The 90s saw the advent of the trading card game. First there was Magic the Gathering, and then Pokemon. Naturally, these two runaway hits inspired a new rush, flooding the market and the back of my closet with would-be successors. And what does a smart trading card company do? Well, adjust the new taste of the market by taking the time to develop their own thought-out product. And what does a stupid one do? Release a half-assed attempt at a trading card game no less than a decade after the trend emerges. Hence today's episode, Tops Attack Baseball Card Game. Oh, I can tell we're in for a real treat. Top's Attack was an official MLB licensed attempt at bringing the best of both worlds together by using real baseball players in lieu of monsters, robots, cute creatures, and buxom badasses. Finally! You know, I can't help but feel that there are people who actually did have that reaction. But seriously, I was actually intrigued by the idea of a baseball card game. Back when I was hunting for cards, I used to go to the Arizona Swap Mart which was basically a modern-day bazaar, but inside a huge, dilapidated warehouse. Now, there's this guy who sold baseball cards. Nothing but baseball cards. Hundreds of baseball cards. And you can just tell from the look on his face that he was so sick of little kids, and sometimes a few adults, I imagine, walking up to him and asking him if he had playing cards. I, just remember, I could just imagine him saying the same thing over and over again. No, we don't have any Pokemon cards. No, we don't have any Digimon cards. No, we don't have any yugi Man cards. Wait, what was that? Well, as a matter of fact, I do have a card that makes its possessor invisible for 30 seconds, but you'll have to... What? That's not the kind of magic card you were talking about? Hey, get out of here! There needs to be a movie with that kind of a premise. I, I want there to be a baseball trading card game. I really do. I want there to be a bridge between these two factions. I just don't want it to be a rope bridge made out of big league chew. Unfortunately, that's the only one that some people think they can afford. Well, let's start. Naturally, each card has a player on it, what position they play, and a set of numbers. Basically, there are only two types of cards, pitchers and everyone else. These are considered the batters. In order to play a game, each player will need four pitchers and nine batters. The player that's on the pitcher's mound will choose one of his pitchers and set it face up in front of him. The other player will then choose a batter and put it face down in front of him. Then it's back to the first player, who declares what kind of ball his pitcher will throw. A fastball, a changeup, or a specialty, which I assume to be the player's signature pitch in real life. Then the batter is flipped over to see if the number matching the pitch is higher or lower than the pitcher's. Naturally, if it's higher, it's considered a home run and set to the right. If it's lower, it's a strike and set to the left. In between batters, the pitcher player has the option to either switch out his pitcher or keep him on the field. And just like in baseball, once you strike out three players, you switch positions. Do this until a rerun of Spongebob comes on. Because that's what you're doing. Killing time. Killing time, not killing brain cells. What I can't wrap my head around is why there are no cards that allow you to modify the outcome. You know, like uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you have magic and trap cards. Or in Pokemon, you have trainer cards. You really couldn't have made, like, wooden bat plus five to the batter. Steel bat plus 15 to the batter. Uh, injured shoulder minus 10 from the pitcher. Torn ligament minus 15 from the runner. Anything? Well, no, that would take effort on their part. No, no, it, it's just a pick a numbers game and see which one's the highest. Oh, and here's a pro tip for you. Pick the pitcher with the highest pitch and always use that pitch.
Case in point, here's my best pitcher, Josh Beckett of the Boston Red Sox. As long as I use his special curveball, I'll win most of the time. Look, I put him up against my entire set and only three people got a hit on him. And by the way, this isn't a special or unique case because the way the cards are balanced, every pitcher will win more than they lose as long as they use their strongest pitch. As a card game, this is a failure. Basically, the only real strategy is to spam your best pitch over and over, hoping that in the end you stop your opponent from getting more runs than you will. Or you can just randomly guess which pitch to use. But does lack of a strategy actually count as a strategy? Either way, choosing between just two strategies doesn't make for a very exciting card game. You know what the really sad part is? They could have fixed this with a simple rule. Something like, you can only use your specialty pitch once per inning, or you can't use the same pitch more than twice in a row. Then as far as baseball cards go, these meet the bare minimum requirements, in that they have the player, their names, and what team they played for, for that season, but that's it. No stats or anything. Just a bunch of logos on the back. Well, CR, if you put a number on the back, then you can tell which player it is. And that would ruin the game. Well, even if that did cross their minds, that didn't stop them from screwing the pooch anyway. See, they printed the logo of the player's team on the back. So if you and I have been playing for a while, and I throw down the only card I have with a Rays logo on it, and you have a good enough memory, then you can figure out which pitch to use. Now, I know most people can't do this. Can't? Most people won't. But still, the whole point of a card game is to not give away any hints. Oh, but we're not done yet. We're taking this game into extra innings. Yay. You see, in every pack, you can either get a foil card or a code card that allows you to go online to tops.com and collect cards for a digital portfolio and play against others online. Oh, boy. So the first thing that greets me after I sign up is a man in his underwear who seems very happy to see me. Hey, you're creepy. Apparently this is where you start setting up your profile. And you do so by picking a name. But it's weird. You have to use this random word generator. You hit a randomizer button and you get a bunch of new words. Click on the words you like and click the button to change the words you don't. I guess they didn't want people naming their teams like the Fighting Cocks or the Good Fucks or the Mighty Vajayjays. But still, they could have programmed the site to recognize and reject obscenities. Again, that would require effort. Anyway, here's my name. My Polish Anteater. Which sounds like a dirty joke anyway. Challenge for the comments. Come up with a joke where that's the punchline. So after that, you start customizing your guy. With logos, skin tone, and body parts. <laughs> yeah, from that oversized arm, you can totally tell I've been working my Polish anteater over. Anyone who tries that one is disqualified. Okay, so now I have my avatar, and the site freezes on me. It's completely frozen. Okay, quick reboot, and I'm ready to enter my codes, and... is way too epic than this game deserves. I don't know. I think everything deserves at least one touch of awesomeness. So yeah, here's my first set of cards. And hey, I've actually got a little bit more features. Barely. Okay, so it's time to enter the code on the card so I can... What? The code you enter is invalid or expired? Oh, that's bullshit. I'm glad I didn't pay a lot of money for these. I understand invalid, but what the hell does expired mean? I mean, these cards are only three years old. Codes last longer than three years, don't they? I'd say that would require effort, but quite frankly, it takes effort to make an expiration date for online codes. Well, it's a good thing they gave me some free cards so I can at least show you how to play the game online. Lucky, huh? For your integrity as a reviewer, yes. For every other account, so you go to this section where you can challenge other players online. Except there are no other players online. Can you believe this? Seven billion people on this planet, and I'm the only one who's actually interested in Tops Attack's online game. Something tells me that you would have just as much luck with that if you did this when the game first came out. Oh, but don't worry. If you can't find anyone to play with, you can always play against the computer. 
<laughs> Will my <laughs> luck never run out? Please, run out. The only difference in this game is that they actually make you change the pitchers each time you use them. And you can't see any of the stats on any of the cards until it's too late and you've already made your selection. But even then, just stick to the strategy we covered earlier and you'll be fine. Here out! Now it's my turn up to bat. You can see the stats on the computer's pitcher, but once again you can't see the stats on your own cards. I guess they had to make this challenging somehow. Yeah. Challenging. But really, that doesn't change the dynamic of play one bit. Just as long as you stick to the strategy. In fact, you can play against the toughest team the computer has and still have a 50-50 shot of beating them. And the only reason they beat you half the time is because they have stronger cards. Yeah, sure, just blame it on how weak your deck is. Noob. Now batting, Babe Ruth! The Great Bambino! Now batting, Mickey Mantle! Actually, this is part of some glitch I noticed after a couple games. First it's Babe Ruth, then Mickey Mantle, and then the glitch kicks in and you pitch against a blank character who always wins because his power level is undefined. I think I just pitched against God. Little known fact, God is actually an avid baseball player. But if you're not a fan of the attacks game, there are other ways to use his cards. In this game section they have over here. Some games ask you to choose a player with the best stats for the game. Like the player with the highest batting or pitching ability. But that won't help you because these games are god-awful. I'm serious, man. They are bugged as hell. The controls are either unresponsive... Delayed reaction syndrome. ...or way too responsive. Uh, hello. Wh where did I just go? I think you just wanted to go get your revenge on God for that last game. And of course there's the mandatory Space Invaders ripoff, where you kill angry fans by shotgunning a wiener down their throat. Well that's pleasant. Oh, and what's the one thing that's kept Space Invaders challenging throughout the years? That's right, the fact that the more invaders you shoot, the faster they go. Or the fact that they fight back? And fine, oh, oh and really, a slot machine game? The baser of basics? But they've managed to throw your card collection in there somehow by having you choose a card and oh my god! My card is somehow one of the tiles on the machine! What manner of witchcraft is this? Does not compute! Does not compute! By the way, all these games give you these special points that you can collect. But you can only earn a certain limit of points from each game daily. So don't even try to bother playing easy games over and over. So what do you do with these points? Get more cards? Hell no! You need to get your ass to the store and buy them in real life. There is nothing quite as wonderful as money, money, money. I've been playing games and getting video for like an hour and 20 minutes now, and this is all the experience points I've earned so far. Look at the size of that bar, and I did nothing to it. They want me to grind these stupid ass games for no less than two weeks in order to raise up one rank. At this point, trying out for the actual major leagues seems easier. Well, if Michael Jordan could get in. So final conclusion, card game, boring. Website sucks. Concept, pretty original and not a bad idea, but disappointing execution. And really, there's nothing more to say on it. I think that Sierra's luck really shone through on this one. Not just because of the stuff he said he was lucky on, but the fact that there was so much shit to complain about. I'm the reviewer viewer. You review, I review you.